it occurs to me that it's kind of cruel to say these are the final notes about standard deviation and variance when there's obviously a couple more pages in this section, so sorry about that. I just kind of meant I was finishing up all the big ideas about standard deviation and variance before we hit the last thing. All right, so variance and standard deviation. So variance we don't use very much, but it is a measure of how spread out the data set is, and it's used in more advanced statistics. Remember that down here we're dividing by capital N, and here we're dividing by n minus 1. And this is a good time to note, um, in case we don't note it anywhere else. I'll just kind of make a note over here. Capital N is the population size. Little n is the sample size. These are some definitions we'll need later on. And n minus 1, I mentioned before, but is the degrees of freedom. We'll need all of that in the later chapters, so you might as well know those definitions right now. So um, N stands for number, by the way. So capital N is the population size or population number. Little n is the sample size, right, or sample number. And then N minus 1, there's something fancy going on there, but suffice to say it's called the degrees of freedom. All right, the standard deviation is a more practical measure of how spread out our data set is. Um, it's the one that we use. And it's especially thought of as the average distance, in other words, the give or take, right? That's what we're using it for. The give or take from the mean, right? Which is the center. Um, and then it never pays to forget that the population variance and population standard deviation and sample ones as well are related to each other. That the variance, if you take the square root of it, you get the standard deviation. If you take the standard deviation and you square it, you get the variance. So I'll just add those in as well. Um, we've, we've already seen them, but just a reminder. Reminder. The square root of the variance is the standard deviation and the standard deviation if you square it you will get the variance simple as that um, the variance and standard deviation are always non-negative always in other words they're positive right they're, they're positive or zero that's the best you can have which should have you wondering, wait, zero, is that possible? And the answer is, sure, <laughs> of course you can have zero. So how would you have zero? It would mean that your data set has no variation. So is it possible to list, uh, have a list of numbers, to have a mean of 74 but have a standard deviation of zero? And the answer is, sure, right? So if the list is 74, 74, 74, 74, 74, you're getting the idea. <laughs> I'll just do that many. Um, that data set, oop, data set, has a mean of 74, but it has no give or take, right? Because everybody scored 74. Right? It has no spread. So the standard deviation would be zero. So the lowest a standard deviation can ever go is zero. As a matter of fact, that's how we get a standard deviation of zero anytime, is just if all the values are the same. So zero would be, um, if standard deviation equals zero, means all values are the same. But that's as low as we can go. The same. My M looks like an N. <laughs> so all the values are the same. Uh, variance and standard deviation are not resistant. We learned that, right? They don't resist the pull of outliers. If there's outliers, they get yanked around. They always have um, kind of the same units or the same units squared. So for example, if this was 74 points for all of these, then the mean would be 74 points and the standard deviation would be zero points, right? It has the same unit as your data set. 
And then never forget that the population values are the unadjusted ones in the computer output. So if I'm in here and I go to options edits or if, if I here stat summary stat columns the population values are the ones that are down here the unadjusted values those are the population values we've already seen that before but it's just a reminder that those are the population values um, it actually calls them unadjusted <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't finish the word <laughs> so um, so it's unadjusted in stack crunch and you just select that if your data set's a population so when you're reading it you know if it says it's a population then you can do it um, one other thing just realize that variance and standard deviation are always positive or zero zero is very rare so they're always going to be positive numbers and generally they're going to be not zero <laughs> right and the zero is a very rare occurrence so It will not happen very often, right? Read hardly at all, but just to know that it is possible. So now let's expand on our ideas about what we know about standard deviation and what it measures, right? Standard deviation is a measure of the distance from the center, distance from the mean. And let's use that to answer this example. And I have to tell you, this one is kind of a fun one. Um, I really enjoy it, but I have seen professors get this wrong at first because they're not thinking about it. So um, not thinking fully deeply about it, let's put it that way. So consider the following data sets, which all have the same mean. And you can kind of tell by looking at it. Look at the graphs. They're all centered around four, right? Four is the center. Four is the middle for every one of these graphs. So they're centered at four, right? That's their mean, right? Their balance point, right? Center or the middle is four for every graph. But now what we're going to do is rank the data sets from the smallest standard deviation to the largest standard deviation. And what you have to think about is you have to think about spread from that center, distance from that center, right? Smallest standard deviation will have the least spread out or the least distance from the mean, right? That's what standard deviation measures is distance from that mean. So least spread out or distance from the mean. The largest standard deviation by contracts, contrast, excuse me, will have the most spread or distance from the mean. Okay, so now you have to look at the three graphs and think about, okay, where are the values that are distant from the mean? Well, the values that are distant from the mean are the one and the seven. Right? So which of these graphs has more at those distant spots? Well, one could say the most at those distant spots. And the answer is graph two. Graph two is the most spread. Not because some bars are high and some bars are low, although that could be the case, but it's more because the one and the seven are really tall. There's a lot of data that are on the farthest out, farthest away from that middle. And there's very little that's actually at four itself. It's all piled onto the edges. It's piled onto the most distant points of one and seven. So this graph, graph two, oh, sorry, my dog. <laughs> she was barking at deer. <laughs> all right, so this graph, graph number two, um, is the most spread. So it has the largest de standard deviation. Largest standard deviation. Why? Well, because 
the bars at 1 and 7 are so tall, <laughs> right? So because a lot of data are at 1 and 7, the farthest distance from the mean. Now, keeping this in mind, which, which graph has the least spread, the least distance from the center? All right, well, it's got to be one of these two. <laughs> so you look at the bars at 1 and 7. And this graph has six folks at 1 and 7, or six data values. Who knows what these are? They could be tigers for all we know. <laughs> and then down here, only three. And this one has a lot piled in that center at 4, right, more than this does. So it's about what's, where are the data? Are they piled far away from the center or are they piled at the middle? So this one actually has the least spread. So graph number three is the smallest spread. Or least spread. So it's the smallest standard deviation. And you can see because very few data points or data are at 1 and 7. A ton of data is right around the center. Or are piled at 4, which is the mean. Okay, well, that must mean by process of elimination that the one on the top is the middle one. And it is. Um, graph number one is the middle graph because it has some at one and seven, but not as much as number two, right? But it has more than graph three does. So it didn't ask for it, but I'll just kind of throw this in there. This graph, graph number one, is the Goldilocks graph, right? It's, a, it's right in the middle. Um, so equals the middle amount of spread. All right, so that's tying in a little bit into section 3.3, but hopefully you can see that relationship there, that there's something going on with when values are far away from the center versus close to the center. Because, of course, that's what standard deviation measures. Standard deviation measures spread. It measures distance from the center. I'll just add that. Never forget, <laughs> star it. <laughs> the standard deviation is a number that tells us the average distance, you know, I'm fudging it a little bit, but basically the average distance the data are from the mean, right? That is what it measures. Bigger, the bigger the standard deviation, the more things are far away from the mean, right? The smaller the standard deviation, the more things are close to the mean. More data far from the mean. Smaller standard deviation, more data are close to the mean. Oop, <laughs> I think it's all the word close. Oh my goodness. <laughs>